Welcome to Mind Boggles. Uh, my name is Bud Hollowell, and I've been doing this show here for a while. Hope you enjoy it. We've covered some topics like the seven levels of natural relaxation, how to calm the mind, even a little bit on quantum physics. Hopefully you enjoy this show today. It's on the pain of change. Uh, one thing that we might notice is um, our culture is always in a state of tension. The Dalai Lama mentioned about America, we cultivate anxiety here. Uh, like myself, I'm a business owner. I own Flamingo Home Care here in Lakeland. And even though I'm in the compassion and peace and calmness business, I still have to advertise like people to help people say, well, here we are and you can use, use our services. Um, but advertising as a business owner, you create this anxiety in, in, the, in the public to try and have them phone you. So if you own a business, you think, gosh, how am I going to find the next customer? Now, if you're not a, owner, a business owner, maybe you're an employee. You go to work thinking, gosh, I hope I can keep my job today. Or maybe I'm working with someone next to me who's causing trouble or my boss is hassling me and I'm working on the night shift or whatever. But there's always this kind of low-level anxiety. Sometimes we'll call it uh, depression or worry or jealousy or anger. These, these um, feelings beneath the surface quite often cause trouble. That's what I'm calling the pain of change because all of us tend to worry about the future. We want it to stay the same. We want it to be where I can control my environment. I want to be able to keep this job. I want to be able to keep the money coming in so I can stay in business. I want to keep this relationship. I want to keep my money. Whatever it is, we want things to remain as constant as possible so we can predict what's going to happen. The problem is it doesn't stay the same. It's constantly changing and we just don't like it. So one thing we should probably consider is this level of suffering we call change. Rather than trying to avoid it, we should study, study it very carefully, look at it, and look at why is everything changing? You know, especially if you're an old coot like me, you think, man, all the, the business the rules that I grew up with are completely different. Now we have laptops, we have Google, we have now tweets and all kinds of stuff. I'm like, who can keep up? Like you go to lunch and come back and things are different. Uh, the speed of change is increasing. So we should study the change and say, well, how can I create a way to view what's going on without being blown away all the time and create this anxiety of what, now what's going to happen? Well, one thing is to study suffering. And notice we, we have physical pain, like you stub your toe or you have a headache or whatever. That's obvious. We have People who have the wrong views of things, where they think the world's against them or some sort of crazy thoughts, well, wrong views certainly cause trouble. But the other one is really the pain of change. We don't want things to change. We just kind of get the hang of where we are and it moves on us. Well, part of it now is really to take a look at the world itself clearly and see what is going on here. And if you look at things like my body, for example. Um, well, when I was a young man, had black hair, fairly handsome devil, I was a baseball player. And I played professionally about six or seven years, and I was fairly good. Uh, now, here last, uh, a few months ago, I was in the senior games, which was a hoot. It was terrific. Now I'm out there, and I'm doing stuff, and I'm, I'm trying the high jump, and I made 310. I went out at four feet. The shot put, I threw it far enough to miss my feet, which was good. Uh, but the idea was, there was a time when I was pretty good at stuff. Now it's like, no, I'm not. The reality of it is, every cell in my body pretty well is gone from the one that was the athlete. Every seven years, we get almost a complete, almost a completely new set of cells. Cells are continually dying and, and being born in our body constantly. The body that I have here was not the athlete. This is just Joe Citizen body now, like everybody else. And the mind has the memory of when we could do things, remember? And all of a sudden you realize, I can't do them. You're playing racquetball and the ball goes over here and you look down at your feet and say, you're supposed to be over there. You, know, you can't believe your eyes, but the body that you had earlier is no longer the body you have now. The problem, of course, is 
noticing that everything is changing. Old age, for example, we have to give up <coughs> who we thought we were and notice how things are. And how things are now is I'm 67 years old and I can't do the things I did when I was 20. The reality of it. It's hard, but that's the reality. Uh, the pain of change. We want to keep the bank account full. Well, it comes and goes, doesn't it? Money comes in, it goes out. Sometimes we have it, sometimes we don't. We have a marriage that sometimes will end gracefully, sometimes it ends quickly, and you get divorce. You have children that come and go. Everything in our life is constantly moving. Even something stable, like uh, your television set that you're watching. <coughs> Notice that <coughs> the TV itself will have a certain lifespan, and maybe that metal or glass or whatever will be around for 20, 50, maybe even 1,000 years before it disintegrates and falls back into being dust again. Like everything we see will eventually crumble back into dust. All of it is comes and goes. We mistake what we look out and see the world and think, ah, I can depend on that clock being a clock or that couch being a couch or my body being the body. If we look carefully, they're all subatomic particles that are coming into existence and disappearing very quickly. The world existence really is in constant change, but we mistake it and think it's stationary. Nothing in the world, in the universe, is stationary. It's always moving. You think, well, but how about my television not moving? Well, it's revolving around the Earth, isn't it, with you? And the Earth is moving around and moving with the moon and going around the sun. The sun's flying through space. Everything is moving. We don't like it. We want it to hold still. Tough. It doesn't hold still. So when we study the pain of change, we realize that's how it is. Life is continually changing. One of the holy men I met a long time ago, Swami Sashtananda, I can imagine someone giving him a brand new Corvette. And I would imagine he would go, oh, wow, look at this beautiful car. The next day they repossess it. And he would be, oh, wow, look how efficient these people are. <laughs> he would enjoy everything coming in, going past, and disappearing. Now, if you hold on to the wisdom of that, you notice as we get congruent, we get in harmony with reality, reality comes in, goes past, and disappear. Not one single thought you've ever had stayed, not one single feeling you had stayed, not anything in your life ever stays. It comes in, it goes past, and disappears. So the question becomes, well, how can I um, deal with this phenomena of life that's changing? Well, there's a lot of kinds of answers, of course. <clears throat> One of them is to see how it is and then begin to enjoy the experience, enjoy the change, right? And, oh, ah, this is gone, now what's next? It's like we're continually in this Easter egg experience where, we, wow, where's the next egg? It's continually changing. Everything's unique, everything's moving, and everything is changing. When I try to hold life to a stationary thing in my mind, I create my own suffering. It's me. It's not the world causing the trouble. It's me with my incorrect view of what's happening. So as I get more congruent, when I see, ah, the world is changing, let me enjoy things coming in, going past, and disappearing. And that's not always easy, is it? I've been married three times. I know this game, but you enjoy the people coming into your life, and you dance the dance until the music stops, and you enjoy the next experience. Right? So part of it is learning how to really, again, see how it is. And add to this, perhaps, if you want to really get into this thing, is you look around the room that you're sitting in and notice Nothing I see here or in your room has any given value. I create the value for the experience. 
I create the value. So as you begin to notice that, you realize, let me see if I can enjoy creating different values for my experience. It doesn't have to be the given. Oh, I go through bankruptcy. Well, let me enjoy who's going to be my friends who won't. Who are the people in my life who are the, the sunshine friends who stay with you when things are good, but they leave you when things are bad? Ah, well, that experience helps you decide, well, who are my real friends? Uh, you go through death in the family. Uh, you go through anything you can think of. It has within it not the bad always or not the good always. It's completely neutral. That's hard. But the events in my life, your life, they're not bad or good. They're all neutral. We have the power to view them in a different way. If you go to counseling, one of the things you try to help people do when you're a counselor, I've been a hypnotherapist, is help reframe the experience. You have a, something happen, you frame it one way, you realize, let me look at it from over here, it's a different take. How can you learn from the experience, right? So part of learning how to deal with the pain of change is first realizing that's how it is. Everything is constantly changing. How can I adjust my view of the world to be accurate as much as possible? And begin to change my view so that I can enjoy the changes that come in my life and go past. Anyway, easy? Nope. Tough? Yeah. Worthwhile? Absolutely. To me, part of the good education, part of really being here is learning how to view the world for what it is, which is difficult, but then begin to adjust your mind and feelings, thoughts, your whole spiritual game, if you want, so that you can flow with it and not be hammered by it all the time, but you can enjoy the change. Huh? Interesting? Hope you enjoyed it. Mind boggles. Uh, today, take care of yourself and see if you can do something nice for somebody. And I'll see you next time.